I'd like to introduce Holly Nguyen. She's from the ANU College of Asia and the Pacific, and the title of Holly's three-minute presentation tonight is Cha Lon, a Chinese city in French-ruled Vietnam. There are famous Chinatowns around the world in cities like Sydney, London, or San Francisco. These are popular places to eat and shop, but have you ever wondered how Chinatown became Chinatown? From the 16th century, Chinese merchants established small colonies in other countries. These trading posts expanded into the port cities of colonial times. My third study is about one of these cities, Chia Lan, in what is now Vietnam. Originally five kilometers upstream from Saigon, Chia Lan is now a district of Ho Chi Minh City. In colonial times, Chia Lan was much more diverse than Saigon. Half of the population included Vietnamese, French, Indians, Malays, Cambodians, and the other half, Chinese. My research traces how Jalan became the economic center of the French colony while remaining recognizably Chinese. Many boats shipped rice, fish, fruit, salt, pepper, rubber, and many other goods to waterfront warehouses where labor coolies loaded them onto steamships that then set sail to cities like Bangkok, Singapore, and Hong Kong, maybe even Sydney, but probably not Canberra. Chinese merchants managed rice mills, shop houses, and markets along the canals that ran through the urban center. Decades later, many of these canals were turned into streets. The curious thing about Shalon is that the city remained Chinese, but its people had changed. The offspring of these Chinese merchants adopted French Catholic names and gave their children a French education. They built houses, temples, schools, and hospitals. Unfortunately, we know very little of this process. Their lives and voices remained obscure. When we don't know the history of a place, we tend not to value it. Vast parts of old Vietnam continue to be bulldozed because we have forgotten. Since being Chinese and colonial isn't considered part of the Vietnamese national heritage, Jolan's history is among the first to be lost. My study searches for the hidden voices of Jolan. I use old newspapers, colonial records, travelogues, diaries, among other sources in English, Vietnamese, French, and Chinese. I want to know who they were and how they lived. It is said that the past is a foreign country and doing history helps us recognize the profound influences of the past on our present, no matter how strange. So, next time you're walking through a Chinatown, remember my project and appreciate the generations of works and lives it took to make such a vibrant place. Our city is going much duller without them. Thank you. <laughs> 